joining on behalf of WILP, the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, which works to address the root causes of conflict and violence by promoting women's human security over military state security for sustainable peace and gender justice. Last year, we celebrated our 100th anniversary by holding a peace summit with 1,000 activists from 80 countries mobilizing around women's power to stop war. From this perspective, and now looking back on 14 years after the Iraq war has started, the costs of war are now in the trillions of dollars. However, the cost of this particular war is just the tip of the iceberg. Today, we know that women's rights are human rights, and that is an obligation for states to respect, protect, and fulfill women's human rights, progressively using maximum available resources, including using innovative financing, such as redirecting and reducing military expenditure so as to free up resources for gender equality. Today, we also know that divesting war and investing in gender equality pays off for other reasons. Research now shows us that gender equality is the number one predictor of peace, that peace agreements last longer when women are at the table and when civil society is at the table, and that feminist movement building is the number one predictor of policies on reducing violence against women. On both counts, the need for change is clear. However, today we face a world of rising strong men and environments of increasing, increasing militarism. Between 2000 and 2015, global military expenditures increased by 60%. In 2015, there was a $1.6 trillion arms trade, with about a third of this coming from the United States. Meanwhile, only 2% of aid on peace and security targets gender equality. Less than half of member states worldwide have gender budgeting in initiatives, and only about 12 member states worldwide have budgets for national action plans on women, peace, and security. In fact, the entire global feminist movement has a budget of about the same amount as one F-35 fighter jet. We continue to spend trillions on war and pennies on peace. And the bottom line is that it's not that we don't have money to invest in peace and social justice. We have the money, we just spend it badly. Trade-offs exist between investments in violence and investments in nonviolence, whether around supporting women in politics, investing in capacity building resources, providing services for sexual and reproductive health and rights, conducting job trainings for women and girls, ensuring education for girls, providing psychosocial counseling for women refugees, developing gender equality programming, or realizing the sustainable development goals. You get what you pay for, and we've spent our money badly for too long. The time is now to move the money from violence and war to peace and gender justice. I thank all of you for raising your voice, and I invite you to share our Move the Money video to raise awareness and find out more at peacewomen.org. Thank you.